Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be a BSL Season 13, possibly Group D, second match between Pepper and Keen, upper left hand corner. We have Keen, or sorry, between Keen and Fisheye. Keep forgetting that Pepper, yeah, you guys get what I'm saying. Upper left hand corner, mustard yellow. And I cannot do the color swap, unfortunately, otherwise it would just be yellow versus yellow. And that is no good. This is going to be on Wavelet. Keen, upper left hand corner, strong Zerg player, bottom left hand corner, we have Fisheye as the yellow Protoss, and we'll see if Fisheye can recover after game one. Honestly, I'm not surprised because Keen is a strong player. I know that he hangs out in the JNU Discord. I know he hangs out with other strong Zerg, and I feel like the North American Zergs have really stormed forward this last season of BSL. They've got Striker, Hawk up there that have really been playing incredibly. Crossy, of course, I would say is... I actually do feel that Crossy underperformed in BSL, and maybe if he got a different draw, he would have gone farther. Uh, Crossy, I would argue, I honestly think he could be a top uh, six player, top, uh, that's kind of a weird number, top five there, and even could make a shot at a BSL championship. He's, I do have arguments that he's, even though uh, Gypsy, that's the thing, he traded in the North American team battles back and forth with Gypsy. Gypsy's, I think that's what made Gypsy's versus Zerg so strong. Anyway, check those out if you haven't already. Fisheye wandering out, going to go ahead and plop down a gateway at his natural expansion. And we have... What looks like an 11, an overpool? Overpool on the opposite side of the map with the spawning pool on 11, which should give a little bit of a challenge to Fisheye because he's not going to be able to get, especially because the distance on this map with the vertical spawn, I think he was hoping, hoping for, he is going to get first scout, but this is a huge amount of distance to cover to get a zealot in his opponent's base. Fortunately for him, that also means those zerglings are going to have to travel quite a bit of distance. Bit of free damage, that probe wandering back thinking about going ahead and disrupting the hatchery. It looks like he's just going to go ahead and let it go for the moment, but as a result, going to lose a bit. But now that Overlord finding that gateway, this drone making its way back for Keen. <clears throat> also, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of debating actually doing some of the... I'm doing a night cast uh, on this particular cast, and I'm debating doing that for a while just to get through Hazu League and Chobu League just because there's so many more games between this season and the last. It looks like Keen setting up to go ahead and grab a third hatchery immediately before gas once again, which I actually wonder if Protoss press this against him and go for fast Corsair, they can really take early leaps in the mid game. Initial Zerglings doing a little bit of damage, but the rest of the Zerglings heading out towards this front door. So the Zealot, actually the Zealot kind of out of position, kind of mid map, kind of maybe staggered. I'm not sure what the logic behind that Zealot is, but it's going to need to get back and provide a bit of defense. This probe has already seen six Zerglings make their way back. So the Zealots now, yeah. This is a very brave Nexus to take, in my opinion, because this is a very, maybe because of the distance rush, maybe because realizing these Zerglings were coming back to deal with the probe scout. That This does tend to be a hole in Keen's play, is his ability to take out this initial probe scout. But these Zealots need to, yeah, cover this front door, because the Zerglings could sneak through that front fairly easily. We do have that Third hatchery and gas mining. I do believe Fisheye saw all of that. <clears throat> we'll see what he opts. He does have an assimilator warping in. Pylon down. Another Zealot trying to plug the gap. And I'm looking for the forge or something on this front door. But actually, three... Yeah, so three Zealots here. Needs another building in the way before these Zerglings start encroaching. But it looks like the Zerglings are going to hold here. But anyway, yeah, I want to get to that because Fighting Spirit Mania is on my docket as well. I have some matches between Seriosity... And I like this Fisheye actually seeing this probe out between Seriosity and Striker that I want to do. And if you guys, that's going to be grueling casting, but it is also going to be hilarious and entertaining in my opinion. Hydralis then going down for Keen, so opting to go for 3 Hatch Hydra as far as initial build. He has just the 6, sorry, he has 8 Zerglings to start. Definitely is going to be critical. I like that Fisheye snuck this probe all the way around. Second Overlord, this might have been a mistake for Keen. This is another thing we've seen in play. Actually, we saw it last... I think it cost him a match for advancement previously in Hustle League, but replacing the Overlord on the front, I'm wondering if this is calculated or not to try to keep track of the Zealots. Level 1 weapons is upgrading. Natural expansion is up. This Overlord sneaking to the front. The problem with this Overlord, that having the two Overlords on location, is, is that makes two very easily Overlords to pick off as soon as Corsairs are out, especially if your opponent can sneak in and, and get the scouts that they're looking for. It looks like we do have a third drone being built here. So is this going to be the pure nine steps? So we got, what is that? Five, 
So we got eight five. Well, there's nine nine five two currently nine five three. So it looks like we are moving towards a nine seven three situation with a bit of modification because we do have zerglings right here. And Fisheye seeing this many zerglings should suspect some sort of early aggression. I will say that, and so usually, so yeah, we do have the the Stargate being built. And actually, having these overlords in location also might be an indicator for Fisheye. That it was a hydralisk opener rather than a layer opener because oftentimes maybe that will be a detection is the level of bravery and keen may be putting these in position because he doesn't want that extra visualization to know whether to dedicate to full 973 or not looks like he has opted for layer instead it is possible he's just gonna lap back to four hatch but with that corsair out he does need to get hydralisks down here and maybe that's why these zealots have wandered down here for fish eyes to kind of push zealots or push Hydralisks that potentially would come down to protect these overlords. But at the same time, Fisheye wants to go ahead and press forward and get that scouting information. Looks like he's gone for a Citadel of Adun before this Corsair. So it's going to be a bit delayed. We do have Lurker Tech being built. So I think Keen is thinking about going for early aggressive Lurker Contain. The Overlord, although it's... I'm not sure to say whether these Zealots are tracking this Overlord to try to keep it vulnerable or the Overlord's tracking the Zealots. At the moment, I'm going to say the latter because these Zerglings are moving in rapidly to get us around. Two of the Zealots look like they are going to be able to sneak out, but that third Zealot is going to lose its life. A good grouping of Zealots on the front doors. we got seven Zealots to start. In the meantime, a fourth hatchery being planted down on the front, so it looks like we are seeing a pushback to that four hatchery style. Evolution Chamber up, level one. Missile attack being upgraded, and Lurker Aspect being upgraded as well. The Zerglings being pushed off this front door. This is kind of an interesting window where Lurker Tech is... Having Lurkers on the front is going to be a ways off. But these Zealots potentially can march out. But is this enough to defend? Yeah, okay. It looks like those two can is enough to at least ward Keen back. Yeah, I don't know if the Zerglings are going to be able to get past and get anything done there. But they are doing a good job of disrupting these Zealots. Keeping them honest. And keeping them just from flooding straight to a base. In the meantime, some Hydralisks out. Some additional Zerglings to potentially deal with this. So Fisheye... I think getting the better part of this, being a bit of a threat on the front door and forcing Keen to invest, but I'm almost curious if Keen is opting to flood a few more. Uh, he's really producing a lot of Zerglings in the midst of this. It, this um, honestly, this looks like a Zergling flood. It looks like he just wants to go for a Zergling flood into Lurker Contain. But Fisheye smelling this, he's already plopped down an initial cannon. He does have that second assimilated up. The Corsairs, two Corsairs actually moving up. Looks like these overlords have managed to get out of position, but he is not going to see this army incoming. A huge amount of Zerglings flooding towards the front. Because these Lurkers are morphing on the front, there's nothing... But He is seeing the Zerglings starting to be produced, but he doesn't have... Keen doesn't have the Hydralisks because of that Lurker morph. And the Lurker's now creating a soft contain. So Keen, currently in the red, looks like he's going to continue to drop in the red just because of the timing... Right there, but a lot of Zerglings in the background, and it looks like what he wants to do is open up this front and potentially flood everything else. But because of that spot of the Zerglings, another cannon being dropped, I think Fisheye might be okay in the midst of this. He's got a robotics facility on the front. I think he realizes he's in for a longer-term game. There's this Overlord going to get picked off as well. So Keen losing considerable resources. It looks like another hatchery being plopped down. Another Overlord... Very likely going to get pick, picked off. I don't think this single Hydralisk is going to be sufficient. Overproducing Overlords just to get some Hydralisks out. But that was, what, 400, 500, maybe even 600 resources lost in Overlords. I'll try to get a, a solid count. So there's one kill there. So that's five kills between them. And this is going to be the six. So that's 600 resources. That's basically a hatchery. That's a lot of resources lost and a lot of delayed time. Looks like the Corsairs are going to get picked off. This is the first mistake we've seen. <coughs> I'm not going to say the first pure mistake, but that, that is critical. He really wanted to keep those Corsair alive. But in the meantime, Keen with a contain of a ma I think he wants to flood this. He's got so many Zerglings here. But we do have several cannons out. A lot of Zealots lined up, and those Zealots do have level one, wep uh, level one weapons. A couple of Dragoons are being produced and put out on the high ground. I also like the Dark Templar and the High Templar to supplement this attack force. Or I should say defense force in this instance. The Overlord is not there. This is the closest Overlord. Looks like it does have speed to continue there. That will negate the Dark Templar as part of that defense. But in the meantime, even if Fisheye 
prevents a blockade. He's actually way ahead economically. What is that? 31 drones to 43? Even if he... Look, ooh, that overlord going... Another overlord getting picked off. Keen is all in at this stage. He's lost too much economy, I think. He really... If he's going to win this, he needs to flood and break this. Fisheye is happy to just macro behind this. He's got double forge as well, pushing those resources. If he can get some good size storms off, get some high templar, get some size storms, and just weather an attempted break, he'll be A-OK. -okay. He's loading up four zealots and moving out. He just needs to hold out is really what I, I'm feeling like at this stage. Just because Keen actually even in supply, but keep in mind a lot of the supply is in a lot of is just in raw army. Fisheye is going to have the trouble of needing to break out. Oh, that shuttle getting picked off immediately. And actually, maybe ignore what I'm saying here. I'm going to say Fisheye just, you know, sitting up to, to go ahead and break the contain. But the thing is, is like Keen has so much bulk out here that he could keep up a, a contain for an extremely long period of time. And the Observer getting picked off on that front door as well. So it's really going to be up to Fisheye to, yes, build an army to contend with what he's got out on his front door, have enough size storm, and if he can get some really nice size storms, potentially break out and move the game from there. But in the meantime, Keen sitting just at 31 drones, even though he's, as far as raw army count, I believe ahead. So many overlords on the front to get eyes, and I actually really like his, he's just spotting everything else, and you can see his game plan is yes, I just want to box, I want to get an early contain. This is kind of interesting playstyle. I want to get an early contain and then just make a stranglehold of contain to follow that up. However, level 2 weapons, level 1 armor, there is going to be a spike here. The observer is there as well. So all the components are here for Fisheye to potentially break out. The question is, is can he micro his way out of this? The Hydra is pressing forward. The High Templar are moving threateningly. Good size storm. But the High Templar gets picked off, as does the Observer. So a nice bit of, I think, that is not what, especially when there are more storms to be dropped, that is not what Fisheye wanted to see. Also, some of these Dragoons getting picked out with the follow-up damage. Now, keep in mind, yeah, the Zealot's not in position to do support, so Fisheye having some trouble breaking out of this front. Loading up yet another shuttle, this time with a handful of of units. I'm concerned for Fisheye now. Especially if Keen opts to go ahead and take a fourth. He's got level two weapons that's coming online now, and he has in a massive amount of lurkers out here. So he's got nine lurkers, ten lurkers, a huge contain. Looking for the supplementary dragoons and also the High Templar. He's kind of hoping to see more aggressive side storming from his opponent. The drop moving in, this time it looks like it is going to land. There's a Dark Templar in the midst of it. Looks like the Zealots going to be able to force some damage back. A Dragoon getting out of control there on the front, but Keen might want to just pull the trigger here because he is down to 27 drones and plummeting. Those Zealots completely emptying that natural expansion. And a Dark Templar is trailing those DTs at the main. So he's actually done a lot of economic damage behind this. And yeah, now he's taking this opportunity while Keen's potentially distracted. But Keen, wow, yeah, this is just a really nice seal on the front. Fish, I think, didn't have energy, had the wrong... High Templar selected, I think. So didn't have the support size storm, so ends up losing a lot of these Dragoons. And there's still a ton. Look at the bulk behind this. A lot of control groups to work with. So yeah, the drops are going to be critical. Some damage zealots being loaded up once again. Keen not really even bothering some battle drones on the front. Love to see it. So we'll see if we can have a take two from Fisheye, but currently Keen is keeping that hand on Fisheye's neck. The Zealot's dropping, the Corsair, oof. That was brutal. Lost the shuttle, two Zealots, and the Hydralisks easily cleaning that up. Wanted to say Corsair wasn't there to kind of spot this. Now the Zergling's starting to flood forward. So clearing out a little bit of that supplementary attack force. Fisheye actually ahead slightly in supply. He's got a lot of probes to work with, but he's nowhere near to a third base. Level two armor should be here momentarily. He's getting a pile of zealots. He has a good amount of dragoons on the front. Let's see if he can get a better size storm in the midst of this. Both observers getting picked off. And the High Templar again getting picked off before that size storm landing. And right now, the resources are starting to look thin for Fisheye. 
I feel like Fisher has got the components to break out. It's just he's having trouble putting them together to make it happen. The Hydra is pressing forward, picking away at this Dragoon line. Really, the the critical piece I want to say is the the High Templar on the Hydra has mostly been silent up to this stage. Fisher has been critically missing that aspect in this match, and Keen now in a strong position, in my opinion, to just keep this death grip inevitably. Or indefinitely, inevitably, Ind indefinitely. There's a nice ice storm on the Hydralisks. Helps the dragoons do their job. Still, the Hydralisks are actually able to poke away a little bit at the zealots on the high ground. And this is the thing. This isn't even getting into the big lurker line that's behind all of this, which are the which is the real problem. So the zealots grouping up. Level two armor just about to come online, and I'm wondering if that's Fisheye looking for that timing. Level 2 armor finishes. He is grouping up his army. The issue is the bottleneck into these lurkers. He needs to take out those lurkers rapidly for this to be an efficient attack. The dragoons scooting out. The observers grouping to the north. Starting to move out now. The zealots somewhat trapped behind this. A lot of them, yeah, just getting obliterated rapidly. They're the side storm dropping. Keen moving through it very rapidly. <coughs> Two big side storms, but Fisheye again boxed into the main. More units flooding down. He needs to break out now. If he does not break out with this next attack, he might as well call GG. And there's still those lurkers in that back line. The Observer is now getting focused and picked off. One remaining. The Zealots getting completely wiped out to the north. Some additional side storm, unfortunately, hitting some Fisheye's own Zealots. And there's still more reinforcements for Keen. He's now taking a significant supply lead. Fisheye calling GG. Yeah, Keen with a really aggressive, brutal contain right off the bat. And I have not seen that out of other Zerg players uh, thus far. Well played on his part. So Fisheye will move to the loser's bracket. Keen will advance to the winner's bracket. And we will see who uh, he will face between Do Life and Masuchi. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.